Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of this Rupee Cast featuring Dawn of War 2 Retribution. Red Rupee here with you tonight, calling the shots for you as always. And we are hanging out once again on the war torn desert settlement of Civil Frontier. And uh, oh, before I get started, I want to remind you guys don't forget I'm doing my holiday giveaway again this year, giving away some copies of FTL, Dawn of War 2 Retribution, of course. So go ahead and put in for which one of those you'd like to receive. And of course, a grand prize of a pre ordered copy of Company of Heroes 2 coming out next year, and of course that'll come with the beta access that everyone's so eagerly awaiting, and we're on Elite Mod once again, so everyone I know is clamoring for the 2.09 patch coming out here shortly, I know it's been released at least for a few people selectively by Kaleto, so hopefully we'll see the main event happen in here shortly. In the meantime, let's take a look at our players, DJ Rafa, apparently just out of the hospital, out on the blue team as the Chaos Sorcerer, and on the red team we've got Stoned Elf Boy as our regal-looking Lord General here. So let's go ahead, get started. Lord General versus Chaos Sorcerer. Chaos Sorcerer obviously going to be a big problem for Imperial Guard with all his AoE damage abilities. Of course, he starts with Doom Bolt, and he'll have his Dark Flames, his Warp Fire, all that kind of stuff. Very troublesome for... Imperial Guard in general, and the Lord General, who we haven't actually seen in one-on-one -on -one much recently. Uh, notoriously difficult to push off the field. He can always kind of just soft retreat back whenever he can. Uh, of course, he can just reinforce and get lots of health back by bringing his retinue members back on the field. So a lot of Chaos players argue that map control is a difficult thing, so we'll have to see if that kind of persistent Lord General play will make a difference. Of course, it will lock the Imperial Guard into having no melee at all in Tier 1, unlike how we see when the Inquisitor or Lord Commissar are in the game. So we'll see how that plays. Obviously, that's going to be probably an advantage for the Chaos Sorcerer, considering the cloaking worship that they have at their disposal. Even when those units are revealed, if they're still infiltrated, they get reduce damage of course from ranged fire and that sort of thing so that might force elf boy into buying some catagens here oh beautiful looking start off doom blast right here hit everything right here beat up those guardsmen an incisive strike right there taking out a retinue member on the lord general dj rafa just comments apparently that looked painful even to him oh man and we coming up very quickly with the sarge for the lord general getting those guardsmen healed right back up keeping them on the field Nice play right there. Um, don't often see those med packs on the field so quickly, but that might have been a nice quick decision. Allow him to stay and not have to seed so early from the center part of the map here. 478 to 500. We're going to have some Havocs coming on the field pretty quickly. That's an interesting choice. Normally I feel like we'd see either a second squad of Heretics or a second squad of Chaos Space Marines, but DJ Rafa has something else in mind. Obviously with this what's going to be a straight ranged build. Uh, those Havocs have the potential to be very effective. Right now he's just kind of harassing, making sure he doesn't lose any unnecessary requisition or manpower. Has his guardsmen just going around, capping everything up top here. They spot the Havocs, get out of there. They might be able to get out of that range of fire, but that instant suppression is quite a pain. They're going to get out without taking much damage. Actually managed to take down a Chaos Space Marine model down here that's hanging out just taking constant fire from that sentinel. In the meantime, Heretic's moving in on the power farm, which is capped. A second sentinel out on the field, so that'll be pretty interesting. Uh, no stomp upgrade on either one, so these Heretics are going to have kind of free reign to bash away at this power node. I don't know if they'll actually be able to take out the node before that sentinel does too much damage to him, but we'll have to see how that ends up. Lord General already upgraded with his grenade launcher, which is, is probably uh, a good choice considering that there are now two Havocs on the field. Uh, he will be able to kind of constantly barrage those. Even if he doesn't see them, you can use attack round, of course, with the grenade launcher. If they're in the fog of war and you know where they're set up, you can just kind of force off those setup teams. But with two Sentinels right now, they can kind of just stay at maximum range, take a little fire from these Havocs, and just pour Sentinel Blasters right into the into the setup squads. So those combined with the Lord General's grenade launcher should be uh, fairly effective. The second squad now moving into setup. Sentinel about at two-thirds health, falling back. DJ Rafa now pushing kind of the center part of the map. Gonna just kind of leapfrog these Havocs up and probably move in on the power farm while trying to take back some of the northern and the central VP there. 
with two Havocs, uh, I mean, you can see the damage that they're taking right now. One's already lost the model, the second squad now getting very low as well. Not really doing much in the way of suppression. The Havocs, not, they don't disrupt the Sentinel DPS at all, so there's two Sentinels. Actually, very good build right now against these two Havocs. So long as the Guardsmen are able to stay on the field and keep them reinforced, or not reinforced, but repaired, and, you know, at least moderately healthy, that'll make a big difference. Here comes that worship I was talking about. Even when these Havocs will be revealed while they're firing, they still take reduced range damage while they're infiltrated, so... We'll have to see if Rafa decides to make more use of this worship and maybe force Stoned Elf Boy to get himself a squad of Catachins or something like that. But right now, it looks like Elf Boy is going to just be heading straight into Tier 2 from here. He's not far off from the power necessary to do so. In the meantime, all the ranged units of Rafa kind of hanging out under the shadows of the worship, now moving in, trying to put some more pressure on that Sentinel. Deciding that the best opportunity to use these heretics is to move in on this Lord General and keep those grenades from constantly raining down on his setup teams. But unfortunately, it was just a bit too much rainfire. And there we go, Vestiments of the Warps, and this is the kind of menace I was expecting to see from the Chaos Sorcerer at this point in the game. That constant teleporting in and disrupting of ranged squads. Uh, so long as he can keep that Lord General uh, tied up. It'll make a big difference in keeping these Havocs on the field. And obviously we saw him fall back. The Lord General can stay in melee for quite a while, but once you get a couple upgraded retinue members, you really don't want to do that because they can be killed off prematurely. And you have to pay every time to reinforce them. So Sorcerer doing a good job right there. He does have his Flame Sword as well, so he's doing some pretty nice DPS little damage over time as well against those guardsmen. In the meantime, we have Sentinels both upgraded now with their stomps. One's looking very low. He's going to have to be very careful. I'm surprised he's leaving that so far up there. If he's not paying attention, these Chaos Space Marines are going to take it out. Let's see if he's watching it all. It's getting very low. 40 HP, 30, and he does look like he's going to escape just barely. But man, look at Stone Elf Boy just kind of baiting those Chaos Space Marines out there. I believe Chaos Space Marines, so long as all of their shots are firing, they will out-DPS uh, the repair of Guardsmen. But once they lose a single model, the Guardsmen will out-repair them. So he was probably betting on taking out one of those members. They are pretty low. They're at half HP, and upon seeing those grenades pouring in, Rafa decides to fall back. So 446 to 408. Stone Elf Boy losing his VP lead as it as Rath is starting to capture up pretty much the last couple points here on the central little treasure belt of Civil Frontier. Havoc's continuing to be a nuisance, but not doing too much damage ultimately. Second squad now moving in. Those grenade launchers proving very useful, at least keeping these Havocs on their toes and whittling them down. One retinue member gets turned into bits from that combined Havoc fire. And the Sentinel, in the meantime, is just going to start pouring away. Oh no, down goes that Sergeant. Don't want to lose that Sergeant. But maybe he just decided he doesn't bother keeping it on, want to bother keeping it on the field. Triple cap against Stone Elf Boy right now, however. And both Sentinels upgraded with rocket launchers. That's a pretty big power investment to get both of those right away. I mean, all things considered, he probably, I mean, he could have brought out Ogrens. He could have brought out uh, a Manticore or... A chimera but instead he goes for those double rockets i believe they're 30 or 40 power each i haven't bought them in a while so i don't know if their value has changed in the elite mod because a lot of a lot of those little numbers have been flipping around and uh, i'm not quite up to my imperial guard stats but anyway those sentinels will be very useful so long as they stick around uh, of course, blood letters, or sorry, blood crushers uh, would easily get kited if they switched to their anti-vehicle missiles, and uh, dreadnoughts would even be kind of threatened by two sentinels, so you have to be very careful. They're very frail, but I mean, as the game goes on, their damage output gets increasingly impressive. We already see the Mark of Sinch on one of these Chaos Space Marine squads, see him doing heavy damage to this Lord General. And this is what I'm talking about, even though this Lord General is very low, he can just constantly stay on Overwatch, bring the retinue members back on the field, and keep a pretty 
keep himself pretty healthy. Oh no, we've got a what's looking like an excellent ambush right here. Oh, those corn havocs moved a bit too far up. He has two auto cannons right here, and if he had moved them kind of both right about here and opened up on that sentinel, look at the damage they do to that sentinel along with those siege. Down it goes. And this double havoc play, double auto cannons. I haven't seen that in quite some time, but it's very, very effective. I mean, look at look at them shred that Lord General stormtrooper squad on the field, but getting sh torn up by the corn havocs, deciding to fall back. They're already kitted up with their assault kit, but they can't quite see uh, the targets that they're going for. What they want to do is get a sneak a grenade on top of one of those setup teams, and they spot them. But both squads have moved. Excellent job rearranging. After you know, if you've got your if you've got your squads cloaked, keep those setup teams moving around under under that uh, under that cloak under that infiltration. So some nice sneaky play. Excellent use of worship from Rafa so far. Sorcerer's just kind of running the bottom of the map on his own. That's kind of the problem with Elf Boy's current composition is that nothing. No one squad is going to be able to deal with this source right now. He's got no melee on the field. He's going to have to commit a minimum of two squads to deal with that sorcerer on the bottom part of the map. So he's going to be really efficient right now at holding map control. Of course, he can teleport around too and kind of be wherever he needs to be if necessary. Losing that sentinel for Elf Boy was very unfortunate concerning he had just upgraded it with missiles. Uh, once, you, once you buy both the stomp upgrade and the, the rockets upgrade, you have to be very careful with them because they're very expensive. Another one's about to go down. It looks like, oh my goodness, barely escapes with 30 HP. A, uh, a manticore coming onto the field right now for stoned elf boy, which is, is just a, a good choice. There's two setup teams on the field. There's no reason not to have that manticore ready to shut them down and force them back. And especially with everything kind of in close proximity right now, he could drop a strike right in here and hit all this stuff. Just, you know, just blast holes right in the middle of DJ Rafa's army composition. So we'll have to see if this Manticore makes a big impression or not. Oh, this is going to be brutal. These Stormtroopers are going to get obliterated. They open fire, and oh my goodness. Two Havocs and Sheen Squads just wiped that Stormtrooper squad in the blink of an eye. Even if he had retreated after that first volley, I doubt they would have gotten away. That was brutal. And I'm loving this just kind of ambush mass anti-infantry play that we're seeing right now from DJ Rafa. It's pretty fun. Oh man, nice use of both the Creeping Barrage and the Mana Core Strike. Uh, had one of those Basilisk Barrage shells hit a little, a little differently, they would have taken out a Chaos Havoc right there. Sorcerer right now trying his damnedest to get in here and take out some Guardsman models. Guardsman, one squad's just going to ignore him and go get the cap. He teleports and recognizes what they're trying to do. Gotta be careful with those Sentinel rockets though, as I'm pretty sure they do do friendly fire. Let's watch, see right there. Yeah, they, they certainly do. But he's going to get the decap. He needs it though, because it's been a triple cap against him for a good deal now. Uh, he's down by about 150 VPs. Lord General's moving in. Katachin's coming onto the field now as well, which I, I think is a, is really an excellent choice, all things considered. I mean, the, he needs the vision to spot those Havocs. They've got Old Reliable and their explosive shot to keep those Havocs on their back and keep them from staying set up all the time. He's going to have to be very aware of these Chaos Siege Marines, though. And if those Havocs do get set up on those Catachins, they're going to be causing heavy casualties very quickly. But so long as he's on top of his micro and spotting those setup teams, it's going to make a big difference. Big Manticore strike coming in. Oh my goodness, completely obliterated the heretics. There goes any chance of further worship right now. Oh, that was just a perfect four rocket strike. Rafa should have just retreated when he had the chance. I'm not sure if he just thought it wasn't going to give a squad outright and thought he could stay on the field or what, but unfortunately a bad judgment call right there. Heavy weapons squad coming on the field now for Stone Elf Boy as well. I'm I'm pretty sure he's probably expecting a Dreadnought or something like that, so this heavy weapons squad, probably a good choice. He can use it to kind of lock down some stuff, but Really, all things considered, everything that's on the field right now for, for Rafa can kind of deal with that, except for the squad of Space Marines. The Havocs will outrange the default heavy bolter that the setup team has, and the Chaos Heretics, of course, 
Uh, oh no, these aren't the ones with the grenade launchers. I was going to say, with grenade launchers, can knock it over, and of course the sorcerer can teleport in. So we'll have to see how the heavy weapon squad goes. Honestly, I mean, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen ogrens come on the field. Uh, the Lord General already has his grenade launcher upgrade, which gives them the move, move, move ability. He could get that and maybe get another, get his uh, commissar and get the refractor field and really just use that speed and range damage reduction and just charge those ogrens in. But right now the manticore has been doing a great job of doing the cleanup work. If only he knew these two Havocs were sitting right here, that would be a beautiful place for a strike, but he does not. Catachins in the meantime dropping some booby traps around. Gonna try to start holding some map. Stone Elf Boy is down to about 150 VPs right now. He's down by that amount as well, so he's gonna need to really start holding the map here soon, or the game is gonna be over pretty shortly. Another little ambush there by the dual auto cannons of the Corn Havocs. That Sentinel's still too close, it needs to move back. There it goes. Oh my goodness, the old reliable completely misses. One squad of Havocs pretty low right there. And now resetting up under that cloak. Stone Elf Boy has no idea what's coming. There's a Land Raider Phobos in the build. Rafa way ahead right now in kind of map control and tech. So Stone Elf Boy is really just going to have to play these next few engagements just really well to, to be able to do anything right here. Guardsmen's upgraded with their plasma rifles down bottom, so these Chaos Space Marines probably don't want to engage. The Sorcerer can probably deal with that on their own. The Chaos Space Marines could probably go up and take this victory point if they so choose. Catachins moving around the back for maybe some sort of flank, or maybe trying to spot the, where these Havocs are. Raph has been using that worship to just an obnoxious degree. And here come the Catachins they spotted. Here comes the Manticore strike on top. Both Havocs retreat instantly. Worship stops and another retreat. The whole center little stronghold has to fall back right there. Nice little dissection by Stoned Elf Boy figuring out what he did, needed to deal with that. Sorcerer scared off the Guardsmen down bottom. Siege Marines managed to take out the node and a generator right here. They should probably just kind of go for the decap at this point because there's plenty moving in on their position. Land Raider Phobos moving in and it's not looking good for Stone Elf Boy at all. Manicor spots that, starts moving back. This Land Raider for the Chaos Marines is just essentially kind of an overgrown predator. Like it just has two twin link LAS cannons, has some nice heavy bolters on it doing some anti-infantry damage so it's just a nasty big tank, really. Doesn't reinforce or anything like that on the field like the Space Marine and Grey Knight ones do. But, uh, just a big, mean tank. In the meantime, Sorcerer coming down, starting to call some trouble. And this is what I was talking about. He can just kind of run the bottom of the map on his own. Even with two range squads on him, they're not going to probably be able to deal with him. Sentinel doing some damage over here. Laz Cannon blasting away at that Land Raider. Another creeping basilisk barrage getting that auto cannon off the map. Unfortunately, the Sentinel needs to be switching to its anti-vehicle rockets. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Uh, so long as that stormtrooper squad can upgrade to anti-vehicle, which I'm not sure. Oh, there it goes. I was afraid he wasn't going to get out of there. Chaos Sorcerer at 50 HP now engaging these guardsmen. Are they actually going to try to melee him down? I'm not sure. It looks like they're going to. A nice special attack. 52 HP, 30 HP. Oh my goodness, if he actually takes out this squad, that's going to be absurd. 25, 20. He's going to stay in. Rafa's not not going to fall back at all. He just keeps tossing guardsmen over his shoulder. A special attack takes out all the guardsmen, and the sergeant goes down to one last swing of the flame sword. Sorcerer teleports out, goes for the cap. He's actually only got 20 HP left, but took out an entire guardsman squad. All these Catachin are going to avenge, though. If they hit him with an old reliable right now, that'll probably just outright kill him. But they missed the shot! He's on the wrong side of the VP. He gets the VP cap. But is Rafa paying attention? No, one shot of the Melta, and down goes the Sorcerer. Land Raider Phobos pretty beat up. Uh, using the Worship once again to keep it stealth. It looks like it's going to move in for the kill on this Sentinel. 
There goes the last cannon. Everything opens up at once, and I love these cloaked volleys. DJ Rafa just kind of playing this game where he'll move his stuff just in range of you and then just unleash a volley of everything he's got right into whatever he's trying to take out. Another Manticore strike just tearing through everything. Lord General now upgraded with Melthus, which will help deal with this land raid. If the land raider needs to back up, it's very low. He doesn't want to lose that at this point in the game. It's got 3 HP left. Here comes the last shot. Down it goes. It was right on the edge. If it had only backed up just a little bit, it would have been fine. And that's a huge loss there for DJ Rafa. Rafa's got plenty of resources to bring something else onto the field here. I'm sure we'll be seeing some Terminators, maybe another Predator. Or, I mean... There's no reason he couldn't even get purchase himself another Land Raider at this point in the game, if he so chooses. 131 to 254. Stone Elf Boy still needs to do something to stay in the game here. Oh, and we're seeing a great unclean one. Oh my goodness. Raph is just going for all the big mean tier 3 super units right now. Another explosive goes down here, an improvised explosive device from the Catachins as they kept the bottom VP. And it's going to be a triple cap here shortly against Rafa. So we're going to have to see if that Great Unclean one can come out here quickly enough to do any sort of damage. But with the way Wrath is playing right now, he really kind of needs uh, the Havocs and at least the Heretics to stay together to lock down parts of the map. But he doesn't have much to go around and cap. His Heretics are kind of locked to staying with his setup teams. And most of the Guardsmen squads, or the one that's left rather, can kind of shoot up the Heretics pretty well on their own at this point. Stormtrooper's getting the Assault Kit once again. So once that Land Raider fell, he decided all he needs to do is be able to deal with this anti-infantry. Big infantry push coming in here, taking out the LAS Cannon, which really isn't much of an issue right now. What he needs to do is try to start pushing towards that Manticore. Manticore strike right in the middle of everything again. Oh my goodness, takes out a Havoc and three models on that Chaos Space Marine squad. There's no reason those Siege Marines couldn't have pushed up on that Manticore on their own. They actually do some pretty reasonable soft AV damage. It's not a lot, but the Manticore only has 350 HP right now. Heretic's taking lots of fire, finally falling back. But, oh my goodness, Rafa kind of slipping up here towards the end after playing so well so far. Some pretty tricky play so far with that Heretic worship. Elfboy doing everything he can to stay in the game. VPs are evening out right now. We have a summoning circle coming in down here. Keeping those stormtroopers from getting the cap. Great unclean one. Oh my goodness, getting a nice special attack and wiping another squad. Oh no, the special attacks have been the death of now two guardsmen squads. And that could be very unfortunate for Elfboy as he's down to just three infantry squads and his hero. He's got the Manticore hanging around, but all that thing's going to be doing is dodging around this rock structure, trying to dodge that great unclean one. Another Manticore strike on the center point. Takes out two of the models. One got knocked clear of the final blast, so he'll be able to get that center VP. As right now, Elfboy's pretty much just stuck in his base, trying to keep his distance from this Great Unclean One and minimize the damage he's going to take from that. Great Unclean One needs to be careful though, he doesn't want to lose this unit as well, although maybe Rafa's kind of just betting on he can keep Stone Elf Boy in his base long enough to take the map back and whittle down these VPs. I mean, the VP is obviously an intrinsic part of the game. If you can't keep the map, it doesn't matter how much you destroy. Katachin's now engaging in a melee battle with these heretics. I'm not sure if they're gonna get out of there. Katachin's still doing some pretty nice damage and an old reliable finishes off the squad. Not looking good for not looking good for either player. It's just down to the wire. Everyone's struggling to take map 101 to 113. Manticore goes down to the great unclean one and that's going to greatly hinder Elf Boy's ability to keep these VPs. A heavy turret coming onto the field. And oh my goodness, that might be just what the doctor ordered because there's really no anti-vehicle on the field and that heavy turret has anti-vehicle armor. This great unclean one is stuck now between a rock and a hard place as there are Meltas, a LAS cannon, and now a heavy turret firing into its back. These stormtroopers need to stealth off somewhere and start grabbing some VPs back because there isn't much time to do so. I'm pretty sure this great unclean one's going to go down using those abilities all over the place to try to take out another squad, but it's just not going to happen. 
Look at the range on that heavy turret, still firing way back here. Lord General claims his kill, and down goes that big, nasty, great, unclean one. Maniacally laughing as he watches upon his impending doom, hoping he's going to take something out in his last gross, bloody explosion there. 77 to 101, Rafa down to just two Havocs and Chaos Space Range. However, floating all kinds of stuff right now. Choosing to get himself some Chaos Space Marines for the time being. Katachin's got the cap. Havoc's moving in to try to support the central VP, but there's nothing still that can take out this heavy turret. That thing can shoot so far, and it can, uh, if, it, if it was up a little bit further, it would actually be able to watch both of these VP points from its spot. Or rather, the VPs. Not VP points. That's redundant. But 89, 88 to 77. Working on multiples of 11 right now. Havoc's hanging back, just waiting for something to move in and try to take that point. They're not paying attention, they're just going to walk right into that field of fire and take heavy damage. Lose a capping squad, don't want to do that, especially at this point in the game. Rafa is now the one who has to respond and start taking some map back. Katachin's on their own, guarding the bottom point. Chaos Sorcerer getting a nice special attack using the Cascading of Flame right there. Another summoning circle coming down, forcing off the Catachin. Catachin's forced off, gonna allow Rafa to get that, get that spot. Heavy turret, I guess, attacking ground, maybe trying to hit those uh, Chaos Havocs? I'm not sure what it's doing. It's kind of twitching there, looking for something to shoot. Another heavy weapons team and more stormtroopers coming out. Stone Elf Boy has so much power. We've got some Chaos Terminators on the field here, too. This might change the game. Also getting an auto cannon. Those auto cannons have really been the bane of Stone Elf Boy at this point in the game. A nice grenade, though, from those stormtroopers finishing off the Havoc Squad. They are really just so powerful now. Uh, obviously, these Assault Kit Stormtroopers, now that they have their frag grenade once again, having a squad that can stealth and then ha have access to a grenade with a relatively cheap upgrade is just very useful, very dangerous for any sort of setup team, of course, because they do such heavy anti-infantry damage. These Terminators taking tons of fire, though, from the LAS cannon, the turret, and just everything else over here. Catachin Explosive never went off. I'm not sure what side this Chaos Space Marines were capping on. Perhaps they weren't in the correct location. The Catachin Explosive obviously does very good damage, but it's very centralized, so the enemy needs to be kind of positioned just perfectly over it. Catachin's not even going to engage those Chaos Space Marines. They're just going straight for the cap. They're going to take some damage in the meantime. For some reason, they fell behind. Oh, and that's why we've got an Imperial Abyss. Oh, it blows up the improvised explosive and then obliterates the Catachins. Sorcerer went down up top, though, taking way too much fire from a bunch of stuff up here. Chaos Terminators, in the meantime, taking too much as well. Really, he should just try to take this top VP. The top VP is out of range of this heavy turret. The VPs are so low, all he needs to do is kind of hang out for a little bit. I feel like if the Terminators hung out up here and weren't taking fire from that turret, he'd be able to take that point relatively easily. Stone Elf Boy, after that engagement, just recognizing that his Catachins disappeared. <laughs> DJ Rafa informing him of what happened down there. And uh, I'm sure, I mean, if he took a look down there, he'd spot that, that kind of infamous rune sigil right there and recognize... That was the doom of his Catachin Devils. DJ Rafa with very few squads left. Needs to get these guys in some cover. A nice looking grenade from those Stormtroopers. Deter them. Gonna take that point and that's probably gonna be it for Rafa. Uh, he's moving the Terminators back up, but I think that's just gonna be too little too late. The VPs are ticking down. It's gonna be a 2-0 cap. Space Marines upgraded with the Mark of Corn down here. Actually, I guess maybe to deal with those Catachins. With that kind of heavy melee damage, they do pretty good damage. They probably would be able to tangle with those Catachins, I think. But the VPs are ticking down. This game's going to be going to Stone Elf Boy with some excellent Lord General play. But, uh, man, I was really enjoying seeing DJ Rafa's kind of worship havoc assaults, uh, obliterating those Sentinels. Oh, man, taking out Stormtroopers and everything else. If he had just kept that Phobos alive, 
that would have made a huge difference, I think. I mean, 44 to 0. All he needed to do was hold the map a bit longer. If he had kept that Guo alive a few more seconds in the base, uh, keeping Stoned Elfway from getting back out on the field, it may have been all it took. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the game. That was a pretty fun one. I think so anyways. This is Red Rupee. Don't forget to stop by my Facebook or Twitter feed. Sign up for that holiday giveaway. I want to be giving away some fun games to all my loyal viewers and fans. I appreciate you guys so very much. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I always appreciate it. This is Red Rupee. I'll be catching you guys next time.